Welcome back to my channel and today we're going to get away from the philosophical talks about the creative process and um, be sure we're going to get back to that again. But um, today we're going to go easy peasy, lemon squeezy and talk about gear. What's in my bag? I know. Everyone is doing what's in my bag. I've been doing it from back in the Flickr days where the whole thing came up, I guess. Number one is my number one camera, which I'm recording with right now. It's a Nikon D810. Um, I've got it since it came out um, a couple of years ago. <laughs> I've been using it, never had big problems with it. Um, I love the image quality and blah, blah, all that. So the the A10 has become my main workhorse after me using the big Nikon bodies, you know, the D4. Let me pull this one out here. Like the D4, the D3S, and the D3 before it. And um, I always like the grip of the big cameras, big camera bodies like this, uh, actually quite a lot. But after using the DA10 for a while, I just fell in love with it. I love the large pixel count, I love the color and image quality and all that. And somehow the D4 became my second body after a while. My backup body, basically. Which I always try to have on jobs. I mean, I really feel very uncomfortable if I don't have a backup body with me on the job. So... At this point, I would say I'm not using the D4 much. Just in cases where I probably need a second lens or a d different range of focal length, um, like on the spot where it would take too long to change lenses. So I always have that with me either way. So that's the basics that are covered right now, camera-wise. I'm looking into other options, but Nikon isn't delivering any, unfortunately, which I would be happy with. The D5 is not for me. Um, first of all, I'm completely away from the big body cameras, uh, if possible, and the D5 doesn't give me anything that I really need or want. The D500 is, yeah, I don't mind the APS-C sensor size, but what it does with the lenses I have and you have to rethink or reframe everything when you switch lenses or cameras and that's just a pain in the ass for me right now and I don't want to deal with that and I'm looking for something that has more video capabilities than my D810. I'm perfectly fine with the D810 uh, for shooting photos for sure and it does a good job shooting the video part too but you know it would be nice to have a little bit more options there and more capabilities and um, So there might be some change coming this year. Let's see. But it's also kind of hard to get away from a system you've been using for so many years, right? Okay, lens department. From the holy trinity of <laughs> Nikon lenses, the 14 to 24, the 24 to 70, and the 70 to 200, all 2.8 aperture. I also have a 50 millimeter 1.4, uh, 35 millimeter 1.8, which is a DX, so APS uh, for the APS-C uh, sensor cameras, which I mostly use um, on the DA10 when filming because then it crops in anyway a little bit, but sometimes even use them for photos. I mean, you have hardcore vignetting, which depending on what you're shooting, you really have to crop. But if it's dark enough, especially for like dark rooms like in a pub or if you're going out with friends and want a small light, kind of whitish lens, works well for me. I'm not too picky on the dark corners. And it looks nice, gives it a nice look. But yeah, I do have that with me. The 85mm 1.4, which is one of my favorite, favorite lenses. Just so beautiful. I just love it. Um... Besides that, I have a 105 macro, 
um, which I not necessarily always take with me. It really depends. If we're doing a car shoot and I know I need to or I want to get like specific details of the car, um, I will definitely take it with me. But if we're going overseas or I know I'm limited on space, even within my bags, um, yeah, I might leave it at home from time to time. Also, I do use it sometimes for portraits, but it's many of, I mean, you can use the autofocus, but it's really, really slow, so you have to manual focus anyway. And then I'd rather go with the 70 to 200, I think. So what else is in there? I have normally only two fillers with me, one variable ND, the Singray 2 to 8 stops, if I'm not completely mistaken. Um, yeah, it's a variable ND, Singray, the thin version. I love this thing. I have this, I've had this for years now and served me well um, for ages. Also a circular polarizer, which is very, very helpful. What else is in there? I have my Peli CF and SD card cases, but I really like to use them and you know, it's, it's nice to know nothing really can happen to them, uh, to the cards while they're in there. Uh, I normally have lots of batteries for my cameras. I have, I think, five or six for the DA10, even though depending on what and how you shoot, it really, one battery can get me through a complete day. Uh, that's for photos, of course. With video, that's a bit of a different thing. Um, I have an extra for the D4 because that battery you just, it just refuses to die, whatever I do to it. Okay, also there, video is a bit of a problem. Um, then the lovely and uh, very widely spread Giotto air blower, very practically shaped, but uh, very problematic nowadays for airports, but I haven't had any big problems. People look at it and have to see what it is and then, yeah. Besides that, I carry one tripod-based plate of each type with me. Then normally I carry two SD card readers with me, USB 3 right now, because um, I'm still using a 2012 MacBook Pro. One is a Hoodman, which I got a couple of years ago. The other is a Anchor one. Very happy with the transfer speeds. Never had any big problems with them, so sticking to those for now. Also an active USB cable from Tether Tools. I have no clue how long it is, but it's very long and very orange. Um, you know, when you have to, or if you want to tether and sometimes you, you're not using a laptop or you need to be far away, um, that thing has never failed me. Uh, it takes my regular USB 3 cable from the D810 and most probably even any other camera couple of USB cables as spares and that's for my main camera bag which I haven't told you what it is but uh, I normally rock the Pelicase 1510 uh, which is a trolley a hard case trolley which I don't know for how many years I've had this but it's definitely getting close to 10 might be 8 might be 9 but uh, we're definitely getting closer to the 10 and this thing is just my absolute favorite camera bag. I take this thing everywhere with me and I have had it everywhere from the desert to I don't know what. And it's so useful. I can sit on it. I can stand on it. You can, you know, it's so, so helpful to have something so robust and sturdy with you. Um, first of all, I never have to fear uh, anything happening to my cameras and to my gear that is in there. And as I said, sometimes you just need to have something for someone to sit down or you need to get a little bit higher up. And even me, I can stand on it, no problem. And yeah, that thing is just killer and it looks really cool, I think. It is Yatta certified, so it is a carry-on. And um, normally I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I've even taken it like on the small propeller planes, the really, really small ones with this super thin overhead um, compartments and it works um, but sometimes the crews might the, the yeah cabin crews might be inclined to tell you to 
put it downstairs uh, or down in the belly of the plane, which I normally never do. And if they tell me to uh, that I have to, I normally take out my cameras and my lenses and put them back in my jacket and so on, and in my backpack, which I uh, normally always have with me too when I'm uh, on the road with the Peli case. Um, and then, yeah, happened to me twice. And once they told me to uh, just keep the trolley <laughs> in the cabin, and uh, the other time they just let me take everything out and put the case, yeah, down in the plane. So, as said, when I have my penny case with me, um, I normally always have a backpack with me. Um, and I normally, for the past couple of years, I've taken my GORUCK GR2 with me because it's just, it just has so much space. And uh, it's very comfortable to wear and it has kind of lots of pockets <laughs> where I can put all my stuff in there. Um, even though they are quite big pockets and not like, a lot of small pockets, um, but it's good enough to put smaller pouches and so on with all my small stuff in there, and also laptop, laptop chargers, iPads, whatever uh, else I'm taking with me, sometimes like small flashes like my uh, Allen Chrome stuff, and um, you know, even put some uh, clothing in there and maybe a pair of shoes and some toiletries, and you're good to go. And they go well together. Um, I might be changing up the backpack soonish because I'm looking for something where I don't have to take as many pouches with me as I do, um, which you will see is, yeah. I, I have tried out a lot of different systems and packing styles and so on. And um, I have it down to where I don't have to think about it anymore, but uh, it would be nice to still optimize a little bit. Having the pouches within the uh, netting compartments of the backpack works, but I don't know. I feel like it would be nice to have smaller um, compartments within the backpack to just know I have to, you know, grab in there and I have whatever I need instead of grabbing in there, getting the pouch out, and then getting out whatever you need. Cables, I have actually lots of cables for all my Apple devices, uh, which you need and always spares, just in case one breaks or someone steals one or whatever. Um, Ethernet cable adapters for laptops and tablets um, to connect HDMI cables, which I also have with me normally. Um, always have at least a flashlight and a small uh, knife with me um, you know just to be able to like cut cable ties or cut tape or something like that I try to always have gaff tape with me um, sometimes I just forget to put it back into the backpack but I always have strips of gaff tape on my trolley or around like my tripods and so on so just in like the worst case that there's no tape and you definitely need something, I can just rip it off. And you have to exchange those though after a couple of months because they kind of dry up or don't work that well anymore. But that saved my ass already a couple of times. So that's always good to have with you too. Um, I normally bring some field notes, uh, just the notepad and a couple of pens. Um, also this microphone. Um, the Smart Lab Plus by Rode. Um, I just have that in my bag with me normally, always, just in case someone wants like a, I don't know, quick video where they talk into the camera, you just put that on them, stick that into an iPhone or an iPad or Android phone or whatever, and you know, you get kind of decent sound wherever you are. I normally always have like the regular headphones with me. Um, then I use these multi-USB port anchor chargers um, to charge all my uh, like mobile devices and so on, my watch, if I uh, don't forget that at home and take that with me. Um, and always a power bank, which I can also charge via that multi-port um, wall charger, which brings me to the next and 
one of the most important parts uh, of my gear that I always have with me on jobs. And most of the time when I travel, backup hard drives or SSDs um, from the Samsung T1s to T3s to the regular um, Western Digital Passport hard drives, which are just cheap, but you can get them now up to four terabytes, which is just a blast. And I normally have like three with me to just, you know, be safe and back up everything while importing into the camera. And then I split the stuff up. Normally, like in a hotel or something, it stays within the hotel safe. Then one gets into the pelly case, one gets into my backpack and one into my suitcase. Um, plus, if I haven't shot that much that all my SD cards and CF cards are full, I don't delete those and I have a backup on the laptop. So yeah, I'm going a bit overboard with those, but um, better safe than sorry. And sure, I mean, you can, and I have travel with one lens one camera body and you know it works and it works most of the time anyway like that that you have like one lens on there and don't switch around too much always depends on what you're shooting and how you're shooting but i've been on trips on jobs uh, abroad where i just had one lens or actually two lenses and one body uh, at a 50 millimeter one four and a 14 to 24 2.8 and you know, that works, and we did some fantastic stuff with that and had lots of fun. But, you know, you never know, actually. So if that camera had, bro uh, had fallen down and, you know, shattered, I would have been kind of in a tough spot. I will keep it to just my trolley and my backpack, which, as I said in the beginning, is what I take with me 90% of the time. I will get into the rest at some other point where we maybe go through lighting techniques also, and, and so on and so on. So hopefully you enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.